Welcome friends, I am recovering from a throat infection and my voice is still not normal. So, please excuse my voice. As you can see, this is a hypermature Morgagnian cataract. The main incision has been made and this is a side port. And now, the anterior capsule will be stained with tripan blue dye. First, I inject an air bubble, fill up the anterior chamber and then I inject the dye. Then I wash the dye out. This step I do because it looks clean to me. There is an eyelash, the trim, the rest of the eyelashes are covered by the drape. And now, the anti-capsule is incised by this cystitum. Milky fluid comes out. The milky fluid is aspirated. In hypermature Morgagnian cataracts, this can be done. We need not do a mini rexis. The flap does not extend to periphery. Visco, this is 2 percent HPMC. With the help of a utrita forceps, now a rexis of adequate size has to be done because the nucleus is very, very hard. Not only hard, it is a mobile nucleus free floating nucleus. So, it is going to be tough to manage this nucleus. I go in, turn the bubble up towards cornea and try my submarine job go through the substance of the nucleus from on side of the equator to the opposite side. But in this case, we could not separate the leathery fibers. So, this is just a trench. Turn, go through the substance through another place try to make a crack and this is a very small crack. Turn the nucleus, hold it very firmly and try to crack and this time I get a good crack. Hold it here again. And here also I got a small crack. The lot of air bubbles filling off the anterior chamber, sticking to the back of the cornea. You can see that the air bubbles are not moving. And this is a nice crack. So I am doing as many cracks as possible. Then I come out, inject visco and now with the help of two Sinsky hooks, I am trying to separate the pieces and here I could separate to heminuclei. I tilt on heminucleus 
and I could tear off the bond between the two pieces. Now I inject visco and again I go in and start emulsifying this piece, the piece which is towards 7 o'clock. The bevel of the phaco needle faces the nuclear material. Followability increases if we place the phaco needle in this way. Now I inject visco take the two hooks again, rotate the seminucleus, tilt it and the bonds, the leathery fibers between these pieces are torn with the help of these two hooks and the pieces are free. So, if we do, do this small manual work, it becomes easy to get on to the pieces and emulsify them. Again, I go in and start emulsifying the piece which is towards 6.30 o'clock. All the pieces are emulsified at the center of the anterior chamber, just in the iris plane or in the upper part of the capsular bag. Never ultrasonic energy is applied near the cornea. No ultrasonic energy is applied in the aqueous. Ultrasonic energy is used only when the tip is occluded. Since this is a hypermature Morgagnian cataract, I am not going to emulsify the last piece. I'm going to implant the intraocular lens first. This is a single piece hydrophilic lens. It is placed in the bag. The piece is brought at the center. And now, I reduce the exposed part of the phaco needle because I do not want to apply any ultrasonic energy on the surface of the intraocular lens. At the iris plane, Keeping the phaco tip at the center of the anterior chamber, the piece is emulsified. There is almost no cortex, but there is some little cortex at 12 o'clock. Removed that cortex with the help of this 23 gauze Simcoe cannula. And now this side put is closed by hydrating corneal stroma. Now a final lavage of the anterior chamber is done because when we hydrate the side port, lot of 
go inside lot of particles go inside the anterior chamber I do a nice lavage of the anterior chamber form the anterior chamber with the help of this simco and then conclude the kiss Thank you very much for your attention. Be better and do better. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.